Today we're going to show you how to replace the GT54 transducer on your force trolling motor. For this process, you will need a number 2 and 3 Phillips screwdriver, 3 and 4 mm hex bits or drivers, 4 mm ball head hex bit or driver, torque wrench, Loctite 243, and canned compressed air or an air compressor. Before opening the shaft cap, you must disconnect the motor from the power source. Remove the four screws that secure the lid of the shaft cap using a number two Phillips screwdriver. Keep these screws in a safe place. You must use them to close the shaft cap. Lift up to remove the shaft cap. Press the tab and pull on both sides of the connector to disconnect the data cable. Remove the cable clips holding the transducer and power cable using a 3mm hex bit driver. Remove the cables from the channel. Remove the plastic cable clamps that secure the transducer cable to the coiled power cable. Keep these cable clips to reinstall later. Take note of the number of coils in the power cable that wrap around the shaft. It is required to use the same number of coils around the shaft when reassembling the shaft and shaft cap. Remove the quarter 20 bolt and nut that secure the shaft cap to the shaft using a 4mm hex driver. Keep this bolt in a safe place. This will be used again. Push from the inside out to remove the square grommet that holds the transducer cable in the shaft cap. Remove the 11mm split connector from the transducer cable. This will help when removing the existing transducer through the shaft. Feed the transducer cable through the shaft cap from the outside until it is no longer routed through the square hole. Remove the two screws and washers that secure the power cables in the shaft cap using a number two Phillips screwdriver. Keep these screws and washers in a safe place. You must use them again when reconnecting the cables. Lift up on the shaft cap to disconnect it from the shaft. Pull the cables from the shaft completely through the shaft cap. Remove the six screws holding the depth limiter collar to the shaft using a number two Phillips screwdriver. Loosen the depth adjustment collar on the base of the steering system. Depending on the height of your trailer, you may find it easier to remove the shaft if you transition the mount halfway between the deployed and stowed position. Slide the shaft down and out of the steering system. Make sure to not snag the cable. Then set the shaft on a table for easier access to the transducer. Remove the four screws that secure the skeg to the propeller drive motor using a four millimeter hex driver. Then remove the single screw that secures the bottom of the nose cone to the propeller drive motor using a three millimeter driver. Remove the two screws in front of the nose cone using a four millimeter hex bit driver. Next, remove the recessed nut that secures the transducer cable to the shaft using the tool included in the transducer replacement kit. Remove the four screws that secure the shaft base to the propeller drive motor using a ball head 4mm hex bit or driver. You can dispose of these four screws. New screws, washers, and o-rings are provided in the transducer replacement kit. Straighten the cables at the top of the shaft and gently pull the propeller drive motor away from the shaft base until the connected power and data cables are visible. Gently pull the cables through the shaft, taking care that the ring terminals and data cable connector do not get caught on the top of the shaft. 
carefully pull the transducer cable straight down through the bottom of the shaft until it is completely removed from the shaft. Push the rubber gland through the front hole of the shaft base. Pull the transducer cable, rubber cable gland, and recessed nut through the hole in the front of the shaft base. Next, remove the six screws and seals that secure the transducer to the nose cone using a 3mm hex driver. Place the new neoprene pad from the transducer replacement kit on the replacement transducer. Align the six holes of the transducer to the bottom of the nose cone. Install and tighten the six new screws and bushings from the transducer replacement kit. Secure the replacement transducer using a 3mm hex driver. Next, replace the 1 inch O ring on the recessed nut with the one in the replacement kit. Apply grease to the O ring. Place the 25mm 1 inch O ring on the recessed nut in the transducer replacement kit. With the threaded side up, feed the replacement transducer cable through the recessed nut and the hole in the front and the bottom of the shaft base. Now feed the transducer cable through the shaft. Ensure to leave two feet of the cable for the motor drive installation. Apply grease to the new cable gland provided in the transducer replacement kit. Place the cable gland on the transducer cable to place in the front hole of the shaft base. Remove the large 3 inch o-ring on the shaft base and discard it. Apply grease to the new 3 inch o-ring using the grease packet included in the transducer replacement kit. Then place the new O-ring in the groove on the shaft base. Blow out any dirt or debris in the four threaded holes on the top of the propeller drive motor using canned compressed air or an air compressor. Remove the O-ring from the top of the propeller drive motor and discard it. Then, thread the cables from the propeller drive motor using the new 36mm O-ring in the transducer replacement kit. Apply grease to only the 36mm O-ring. If the power and data cables from the propeller drive motor are not already aligned and bundled, straighten, align, and bundle them with tape. Place the 36mm O-ring on the top of the propeller drive motor. Feed the power and data cables from the propeller drive motor up through the shaft until they emerge from the top. Gently pull the ends of the power and data cables as you feed them the rest of the way through the shaft. Prepare the four bolts in the transducer replacement kit by placing a washer and a 3 16 inch o-ring on each one. Apply grease to the bolts and o-rings. Make sure to avoid getting grease on the threads. Thread all four of the prepared bolts halfway to make sure that the shaft base and the propeller drive motor are properly aligned. Then lightly tighten all four bolts by hand. Tighten all four bolts to 35 inch pounds using a torque wrench. Next, select the cable gland that fits your transducer cable from the transducer replacement kit. For a four pin transducer, select the cable gland with the smaller hole. A cable gland without a hole is provided if you are not installing a transducer or not routing the transducer cable through the shaft. For an eight or 12 pin transducer, select the cable gland with the larger hole. For this video, we will be using the GT54, a 12 pin transducer. 
pull the transducer cable straight and measure 15 inches from where the cable enters the transducer. Mark the measured location. Route the transducer cable through the nose cone so it will fit correctly onto the propeller drive motor. Apply grease to all surfaces of the cable gland and place on the marked location. While keeping the cable gland aligned with the mark on the transducer cable, gently pull the excess cable through the top of the shaft until the cable gland fits into the hole on the shaft base. Place the recessed nut into the hole on the shaft base and tighten it using the included tool. Place the nose cone onto the propeller drive motor. Secure the front of the nose cone to the propeller drive motor using the existing screws using a 4mm hex driver. Then secure the bottom of the nose cone to the propeller drive motor using a 3mm hex driver. Next, secure the skeg to the bottom of the propeller drive motor using the existing screws and a 4mm hex driver. Now, feed the cables up through the steering system. The shaft is keyed to fit in the steering system one way only. Align the shaft key to the bottom of the steering system and insert the shaft and push it up through the top. Tighten the depth adjustment collar on the base of the steering system. It may be helpful to move the motor mount up about halfway to make it easier to install the shaft. Wrap the power cable around the shaft the appropriate number of times using the coil count you recorded when you removed the shaft cap. Pull the cables from the shaft completely through the shaft cap. Place the shaft cap on the shaft, aligning with the groove on the shaft. Next, install the quarter 20 bolt and nut to secure the shaft cap to the shaft using a 4mm hex driver. Feed the transducer cable completely through the square hole in the shaft cap. Install the grommet on the transducer cable. Route the transducer cable alongside the coiled power cable using the cable clamps to hold the cables together. Route the transducer cable through the mount base alongside the power cable. Use the cable clamps to secure the cables to the base. The ring terminals need to be tightened so that they lay flat against each other without any gaps. Failure to do so can lead to potential electrical damage to your trolling motor. Align the rings on the ends of the cables according to color. Stack the red cables together on one terminal and the black cables on the other terminal. Align both sections of the data connector and push together to connect them. Place the lid on the shaft cap. Install the four screws to secure the lid of the shaft cap using a number two Phillips screwdriver. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.